All right, in this case, you've got a trinomial to factor, but your x squared coefficient isn't 1, so you can't use that nice rule that we just learned. What you can do is you can look at each term and say, is there a common factor that all of these terms share that I can take out? So in this case, there is actually a common factor of 4. Each of these terms is divisible by 4. So you can take that out and rewrite it as 4 times something. To figure out what's inside the bracket, take each term in your original expression and divide by the common factor. So for example, the first term would be 4x squared divided by 4. So 4 divided by 4, they cancel out, and you just get x squared. Next term will be negative 32x divided by 4. Negative 32 divided by 4 is negative 8, so you get negative 8x. And the last term, 48 divided by 4 is 12. So this is, just, this is just another way of rewriting your original expression. The advantage of this way is that now, within the brackets, your x squared term has a coefficient of 1. So now you can try that factoring rule. So you re rewrite this as 4 times, you got two brackets. First term in each bracket is x. And then to figure out the number term, we need to find a number that, we need to find two factors of 48 that add to negative. So you can write this as 4, if, it fact, if it's factorable, it's going to factor into two brackets. First term in each bracket is x. And then to find the two number terms, we need to find numbers that multiply to get positive 12 and add to get negative 8. So if they're multiplying to get a posit positive number and adding to get a negative number, I know they must both be negative. So I could try a negative 1 and negative 12, but that would add up to negative 13, that's no good. I could try negative 2 and negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 6 equals 12. Negative 2 plus negative 6 equals 8. Great. Negative 8, sorry. So those are your two factors. Negative 2 and negative 8. And that's your final answer because you can't do any more factoring. If there was more factoring to be done, you would have to keep going. Alright, next problem. So now our highest term, uh, highest order term with the x cubed, doesn't have a coefficient of 1 in front of it, so that's no good either. Looking for a common factor, and I see that all three of these terms are divisible by 3, and they're also all divisible by x. They've all, they've all been multiplied by at least 1x. So your common factor here is 3x. Take that out. Then inside the brackets you'll have 3x cubed divided by 3x, 3 divided by 3 is just 1, x cubed divided by x is x squared. 21x squared divided by 3x, 21 divided by 3 is 7, x squared divided by x is just x, and then 30x divided by 3x, 30 divided by 3 is 10, and x divided by x is just 1. So now you need to keep going because there's a possibility that this x squared plus 7x plus 10 could be factored. So if it can be factored, now the x squared coefficient is 1. So if it can be factored, it'd be written in the form two brackets with x, in the first ter x as the first term in each one. And number terms, we need to find something that multiplies to 10 and adds to 7. So they'll both be positive. Um, just by thinking about it, I can guess, so 2 times 5. 2 times 5 is 10, and 2 plus 5 is 7. So plus 2 and plus 5. By the way, it doesn't matter the order that you write these in. Um, x plus, you could have written x plus 5 times x plus 2. It would have been the same thing. But anyway, there's your fully factored form.